shame There calls my blessed Savior All the scars that marred the body of my Lord All the miles between these earth and God's blue heaven Could not keep him from returning back to earth He's coming back again and I'm the only Turning for his pride Reservations have been made I'll soon be going Have a mansion over on the other side now When my Lord returns He won't need a mansion Oh, earthly man will not be mocking his sweetness I don't know if we preach it enough or teach it enough about the Lord is coming back. Yes. Truly things are shaping up around us Amen. to point to his coming. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, I asked Sherry's permission to share this with you. Uh, and it makes sense to me. I know we can't put a lot of stock in dreams. But the Bible does say in the last days he would give us dreams. You know, he would he would talk to us and speak to us in various ways. And sometimes, and I know it's been true in my life, God has talked to me through some dreams that I've had over, li you know, over my lifespan. But like I said, you can't put stock in every dream you have. But sometimes, sometimes, God is talking to us. Um, last Saturday, um, Sherry and um, the pastor here and, and her husband... They invited us to go eat with them, and we were riding in the car, and she and I were sitting in the back. And she was really stirred up about that. I mean, she says, and, and I'm going to read it to you so I don't leave anything out. But we were riding in the car, going out to dinner with our husband, Sherry and I in the back seat talking. She began to re relate to me a terrifying dream she had that had her very troubled. In her dream, she was in a place. She said she could hear the sounds of crying and terror and people's voices, you know, tormenting. And she said in the dream, she looked up in the sky and she saw many black helicopters up in the sky. She said it seemed the people were frightened of this, this sight uh, as she was in this dream. She said that's... She said, that is all that stood out about her dream was this sight and looking up and hearing the terror in the people's voices. She said, when she woke up, this word or name come to her. She says, just out of the blue. And it's the word Hezbollah. Hezbollah. And um, anyway, I'll get into that. She says, I told her, I said, you just have maybe have just been given a glimpse of future events because what she described to me I remember reading about something over in the book of Revelation that it sounded like John was describing helicopters which he wouldn't know how to describe a helicopter he'd never seen one right that was in the future but I'm gonna 
Anyway, I went to my Bible on my phone. I got my Bible on my phone. And, th and this is what's strange. This is what lets me know. It was no coincidence. I pulled up the book of Revelation in my phone. I didn't know where to begin because I didn't know where the scripture was at. And I just decided to go to chapter 9 in the book of Revelation. And this is the strange part. Normally when you pull up a book in your Bible, in your phone, it'll start in the first verse. I don't know what happened. It started in verse 9, exactly where I needed to read. And listen what it says. <laughs> I get chills thinking about this. <laughs> Revelation 9 and 9, it says, And they had breastplates, as it were breast, breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And then I begin to read on. Didn't that sound like John might have been describing a helicopter to you? It did to me. And listen, and I added the other two verses that followed it. And they had tails like unto scorpions. <laughs> Scorpion sort of resembles a helicopter, don't it? <laughs> you think about that tail. And, and, and there were stings in their tails. They could have been firing things from those helicopters. And their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. And then I went and searched out what Abaddon means. Listen to this. Abaddon is the destroying angel of the bottomless pit. The word is derived from the Hebrew abad, to be ruined or lost meaning the lost one. But the full name of Abaddon means destruction. The word appears in Greek and Hebrew, but not in Latin. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollon. I'm, I'm probably not pronouncing that right. But I want you to think about this. The Islamist, the Islamist militant groups, the ISIS people, with their reign of terror doing the unthinkable, I mean, they are doing things that nobody that's following God would do. They're doing the unthinkable. I even read one thing where they'll capture these women and the young girls and molest them and take advantage of them. Now, you know they're not of God to do that. Oh, dear Jesus. And uh, this alum, I said, where does this evil originate with? You got it. It's the angel of the bottomless pit. I'm going to skip over because I, I'm telling you, I don't really feel prepared to do this. But if the Lord had just helped me, I said, God, just, if he'll just let me be a vessel this morning to bring out what's, what I'm feeling in my heart, y'all pray for me. My heart is stirred. I am so stirred about the things that, and I'm trusting Jesus at the same time. You know, it don't matter what is coming upon us. It doesn't matter what the future holds. If we'll hold to Jesus and trust him, we are in a safe haven. He's our shelter. He's our refuge. He's everything that we need is in him. Hallelujah. We are safe in Jesus. If the church is to be a watchman and the teachers and the preachers are to warn the people, then if ever a time in history of the church and the current things that are taking place, now, now, more than ever, we're to warn we're to sound the alarm. Jesus Christ is coming back again. He's coming back. And we as his children must be as prepared as we can possibly get. And to try to win others to come. 
to come, to not be left behind when he comes. He's coming back. And I feel in my spirit, and I believe the word verifies it, the signs of the time, he's coming back. And it could be much sooner than we can even imagine. It might be before this day ends. How do we know? You know, God has not allowed us to know the day or the hour, but he does allow us to know the seasons, the signs. One place it all said that, said that um, the children of darkness, that day will take them as a thief of the night. But the children of the light, it won't come upon us as a thief. Because why? We'll be looking up. We'll be prayed up and expecting his appearing. <laughs> we'll want to see him. We won't be ashamed when he comes because why? We have consecrated our life unto him. Hallelujah. We don't know the day of the hour, but the signs and the season. I do not pretend to understand Bible prophecy, but knowing how much has already fulfilled gives you and I, if we think about it, the wisdom to know that the promise Jesus made to come back will come to pass. Every, every prophecy in the Word of God has fulfilled, we, yeah, we're in the last days now. He promised to come back. That has been prophesied. He told us himself. He told the disciples, it's in the word of God. If I go away, I will come again. He'll come again as a groom for his bride. I don't know about you, but I want to be in that group called the bride. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want to be part of the bride. <laughs> Hallelujah. Where we need to be careful is to make sure we are ready to face his coming and be sure all is under the blood. <laughs> Keep our heart right with God. He's the one we have to please. You don't have to worry about pleasing somebody else you don't have to even worry about what they're doing you worry about what you're doing i got to worry about what sister deanna's doing yeah we're to expound the word teach the word preach the word bring it out but it's up to you as individuals what you do with it it's not my responsibility what you do with it i can't make nobody serve god but it's my responsibility to serve him for myself. My soul's at stake. Hallelujah. Jesus said in Luke 21 and 35, For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. It'll be like a snare. What, what is a snare? It's a contraption that'll you can you know put it out in the woods or what, and it'll catch an animal or a critter of some type. That animal, that critter, does not know that snare is there. It may be covered over with leaves or whatever. I'm not a, I'm not a hunter, but I mean, just in my heart, that that critter, that animal, wouldn't wouldn't go get in that snare if he could see it and understand that that's going to hurt him. Listen, said, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. The next verse says, watch ye therefore and pray always. I don't think we can stress enough how important it is to pray. You know, and, and, and not to just pray, but know and trust and believe that God is hearing us. We gotta pray in faith. Yes. If we don't pray in faith, we're praying for naught. Amen. Amen. You know, if we don't use faith, the yes. Lord's not pleased. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy. <laughs> this is probably my favorite scripture and the one that stays on my heart here lately. Watch ye therefore and pray always 
that ye, that you, that me, that I and you may be accounted worthy to escape. Worthy to escape. <laughs> that, that makes me sound like some fleeing's got to take place. What are we to flee? I know we're to flee the lust of the flesh and the worldly things that, that w w entrap us and pull us away from God. Even, even we got to be careful about relationship. You don't need to hook up or get involved with somebody, whether it's a friend or whatever, that's going to pull you away from God. Right. Hallelujah. But he says, watch and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Hallelujah. It's appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Hallelujah. But some are not going to taste of death when he comes. You and I that are alive and remain will be caught up to meet him in the air. That's what the word says. There's going to be a great transformation take place. Hallelujah. But we serve the God of miracles. <laughs> Look what he did for the children of Israel. Amen. He opened up the Red Sea and they walked across on dry land. Amen. Right. A God of miracles. Mm -hmm. and, and Moses, he, he spoke to the rock and, you know, and, and water come forth for the children of Israel to have water. All these miracles... <laughs> You can go back to the burning bush that God appeared in. And it, and it was a, a, quite a sight. The bush was on fire, but it wasn't burning. It wasn't being consumed. Amen. <laughs> if we get on fire for God with the Holy Ghost and fire, yes. Yes. <laughs> you, you know what? <laughs> yes, you might be on fire. People might realize you're on fire, but you're not consumed. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Listen, I want to be able to stand before him unashamed. But you know, even living the closest that we can live, I believe we'll be in such awe of him. It'd be such a, an humble experience to see Jesus for the first time. I don't know, I sort of feel like I'm going to want to fall on my face. Lord, I'm not worthy to even look upon you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Luke 21 and 34 says, And take heed to yourselves. we got to get a hold of it. Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. I meant to look that word up. You may know what it means, Brother Bill. And drunkenness. I know what that means. <laughs> drunkenness. That's being you know, filled with wine or alcohol or whatever that takes away our sober mind. And, and, and be not uh, with suffering and drunkenness and cares of this life. Cares of this life. We can get so caught up with just everything and the cares of life that we just push God out. That God has no place. That he was maybe saying, you haven't talked to me yet today. Where are you? Come talk to me. Hallelujah. But we get so caught up in everything that we have to do. But it says, in the cares of this life, so that that day come upon you unawares. In other words, we can get so busy in this life and all about this life and doing this and doing that. We're not watching. We're not praying as we ought to. We're not watching and expecting Jesus to come. Listen, many have just decided today the Lord delays his coming. Amen. Listen, I don't want that to be me. I don't want to say, Lord, you just, it looks like you're not going to keep your word. You're delaying your coming. Hallelujah. But many today have decided that the Lord delays his coming and for the most part really don't believe in the second coming of the Lord. So they just decide to live it up. Let's go party. Let's go drinking. Let's live for pleasures of this life. Hallelujah. I do not condemn them. 
you know, I realize Satan, the, the God of this world, hath blinded their eyes. I've been there. You've been there. We've all had our minds blinded by the God of this world. What we got to be careful now is not to let him blind and cloud up our minds now. If we're calling ourselves serving God, we best be sober and watching and waiting for his appearing so that that day won't come upon us unawares. Hallelujah. I don't want to get caught up in the pleasures and the party in life of this world. To me, if I did that, I would be turning from my Lord. I'm not, oh, Jesus. If he'll be my helper and he'll help me, I never want to go there again. I said, these are the ones who are not watching yet call themselves believers and Christians. The Lord knows there is a people and an end time generation that will be called by his name, but do not live upright and holy before him. God says in Second Chronicles 7, 14, if my people, these are people which are called by my name, they're calling themselves a child of God. Amen. If my people which are called by name by my name shall humble themselves. You know, we got people today just eat up with pride. They don't know how to be humble before the They don't know how to humble themselves and say, Lord, I'm just making a mess. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Lord. I repent, God. Help me. But he said, if they shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God knows that we live in the day when Isaiah said in 520, Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. We are in that day, people. We are in that day. Oh, Jesus, help your church. Lord, help your bride to be prepared and to be ready to meet you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm going to get back over in the first in a minute, but I'm going to go on with this because I don't want to be too lengthy. But over in Joel 2.31... You know, there's going to be, there are signs in these last days. Um, I don't know if you've, any of you have heard any of um, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn's teachings or his preachings. I think some of you might have been here when we uh, played the, the movie Isaiah 9:10, where he was explaining the harbinger and and all these signs. God sends, you know God loves us enough to send us warnings. It, wouldn't you warn your child if they're in danger? Yes. If, if your child's all hung up on drugs, mama tries to warn them. That's right. Son, daughter, you've got to get free of that. You, you're ruining your life. You're going to destroy your life. We warn our children if we love them. God loves us. We're his children. He's going to send warnings. He is sending warnings to warn us. He does not want us to miss heaven. He doesn't want his children. He loves us and he wants relationship with us forever, for all eternity with him. God sends warning. But listen in Joel. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. You know, we've been hearing a lot about the blood moons. I believe they started last year, right? And we're, we're getting ready for the final blood moon. I think there's four of them, and it's called a tetrad. A te do you know the word for that? Anyway, it's very unusual, and it has been a long, long time since this has happened on Jewish holidays. All the blood moons are falling on Jewish holidays. We can liken America to Israel of old. You know what? God loves us just the same as he does the, the Israelites. 
And, and Israel's, you know, his people, the Jews, he wants all to come to salvation. Whether they be Jew or Gentile, it doesn't matter to God. We're all his family. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. We can take ourselves out of his family, but we can't put ourselves in unless God draws us. If he speaks to our heart to come, then it's up to us to be obedient. That's what puts us in the family of God, is obeying God. No man can take you out except you and your own free will. You can take yourself out of God's hand if you so desire, if you so choose. But oh, what a foolish thing to do. Oh, how foolish. Listen. Let me read that one more time. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and the terrible day of the Lord. The great, how can it be great and terrible at the same time? Why? Because it's the day he returns. It's going to be terrible for them that are not ready, but it's going to be a great day for those that are prepared to meet him that are in the bride of Christ. The great and terrible day of the Lord. I'm going to jump over to Revelation chapter 6 with this next verse. <laughs> and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. God does uh, show signs. From what I understand, when um, the Christ child was born, he put the star of Bethlehem to lead the wise men to him, to lead the shepherds. The star of Bethlehem. That was a sign in the sky. God shows us signs in the sky and other things that come into our lives and around us. He is showing signs every day. He doesn't want you to be lost. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. The thief, if you knew when the thief was coming, you'd be prepared. You'd be sitting up probably with your gun in your hand. <laughs> He's not coming in here and spoiling my house. He's not coming in here and killing my family. Amen. You'd be prepared. That's right. Likewise. Do we want to be lost forever without God and in a horrible place prepared for the devil and his angels? If we're wise, we will prepare. Just as if you knew the thief was coming, you'd prepare for that. Hallelujah. For when they shall say, peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. You know, there's talk about, you know, there's going to be this peace treaty that will come about between Israel and I guess it's Palestine or maybe even other nations. I'm not sure. I don't understand it. Don't pretend to. But here it says, and when they shall say, Peace and safety. You know, I don't know if that'll be a sign when this peace treaty comes about. I don't know that. I don't know if this scripture's talking about that. Like I said, I don't pretend to understand Bible prophecy. I just try to be led of the Lord in teaching his word. Hallelujah. But ye brethren, <laughs> he's talking to us. <laughs> Brethren, sisters, if you're in the Lord, this is to us. Listen. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. <laughs> Listen. That that day should overtake you as a thief. The one that's coming upon as a thief is the one that's not looking. They're walking in darkness. But we're 
children of the day. <laughs> We're not in darkness. <laughs> you are the children of light. <laughs> if you have Christ, you have light in your soul. And not only that, he speaks to our hearts. He speaks to our spirit. He warns us. He's trying to warn us today. Ye are. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. Is he talking about laying down and getting a night's rest? That's not what he's talking about when he says, let us not sleep. He's talking about being watchful, waiting, looking for the Lord's coming. He says, for they that sleep, sleep in the night. <laughs> and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. He tells us to let us watch and be sober. Boy, that sure does away with these sipping saints. If they read this scripture, how can they justify using alcoholic beverages? I don't know about you, but when I got saved, God convicted me of such as that. You know, I, and I can't, f I'm not going to go there, <laughs> hallelujah. But we are told to watch and be sober. Not just sober as, as not drinking alcohol, but sober in our mind, in our thinking. We're not to be deceived by the God of this world that is sucking so many into deception in the day that we live for they that sleep, sleep in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith. You know what? We're not going to get through this thing without faith. We've got to have the breastplate of faith Amen. to make it, to see Jesus, to be ready for his coming. Amen. How do you get faith? The word says, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How shall they hear, lest there be a preacher? How shall they hear, lest there be teachers? How shall they hear, and we need the Holy Ghost. He's the greatest teacher of all. You know, the preacher can't preach, and the teacher can't teach without the Holy Ghost. We've got to have him to lead and guide us into all yes. truth. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Putting on the breastplate of faith yes. and love. Yes. Oh, we cannot leave that out. Yes. If we don't love one another, the love of Christ is not in us. Right. We must love. Some people make it hard to love them. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. I don't know about you, but I don't love the devil and never will. But even though we can maybe can't have close fellowship with some, you know, they've been ugly and nasty, but still we're to forgive them, love them from afar. <laughs> you don't got to go <laughs> buddy up with them again if they've been mean and ugly. But even if they don't ask for forgiveness, we must forgive. Forgiveness doesn't mean you've got to get all roped up in them again. Amen. If, they, if you know that they're going to do you harm and they, they don't mean good for you, you best stay clear of them. Amen. But do forgive them. Did you know if you don't forgive, the Heavenly Father won't forgive us? You know, to be like Jesus, we must forgive. <laughs> I tell you what, He had a lot to forgive this old girl Amen. and he still does Amen. if I miss the mark I have to say Lord I'm sorry you know and it ain't necessarily that you sin maybe he just was trying to lead you to do something you know to obey him obedience if we disobey it is bordering on sin we must ask God to forgive us Oh, hallelujah. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. And for a helmet, the hope of salvation. <laughs> salvation. A crown of life. 
Maybe we would have put it that way. Salvation's a crown of life on my head. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He's coming back, people. He's coming back. And we must be prepared. We must be ready. Hallelujah. Um, let me just... I'm just going to delve into this just a tiny bit. One of the things that really caught my attention in the book of Revelation was chapter 6. And six verses beginning in verse 12. I, I was telling my husband, I said, aren't there 66 books in the Bible? Yes. Isn't Revelation the 66th book in the Bible? Yes. Well, this is the sixth chapter in the book of Revelation. And these six verses are so relevant to what is coming upon this earth when God pours out his wrath. This is the opening of the sixth seal when God pours out his wrath on those who would not hear his voice. This is the time when he's pouring out his wrath. Now if I understand scripture right and we just read it in your hearing, he has not appointed his children unto wrath. Rather, he would let us escape the wrath that is coming upon the earth. Revelation 6 and 12 and says, And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. There have been many predictions for years that there'd be a great earthquake in, over in California. I don't know. I don't, can't say you can go by everything you hear. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. We're fixing to have another blood moon. I ain't saying that's when it's going to happen. I'm just saying we need to take heed and be ready for when it does. Hallelujah. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. <laughs> We're fixing to be shaken. We're being shaken. But this here is... God pouring out his wrath with the opening of the sixth seal. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. I don't, I don't pretend to understand all, all this that I'm reading. I don't think no man can really say they know exactly what it is what it means. Did you know the future is still yet to unfold? Uh, what we read here will understand better as it unfolds. A lot is unfolding. I don't, I don't know. Brother Bill says this, and I, I, I kind of tend to agree with him. How far are we already into the great tribulation the Word speaks about? Listen, and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains, listen, <laughs> it didn't do them no good to be a king and a great man and a rich man and chief captains and mighty men and every bondman and every free man. Listen to what they did. They hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. All of their glory and their money and their pride and all lifted up, not doing them no good now. Oh, think about it. These are people that are not right with God. Amen. And I don't care how lofty they think they are and how special they think they are. And maybe they've done give so much to the poor, but it's not good deeds that's going to get you right with God. Right. Good deeds are good. Don't, don't dismiss that. But getting right with God is a thing. It's a problem with the heart. The iniquity that our flesh will follow after if God doesn't transform us through his power. But they hid themselves in the dens and the rocks of the mountains. 
And listen, they even said <laughs> to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. I, I kind of like to think the church has been taken out before this moment in time. Church is gone. Church is uh, with Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, but the wrath of the Lamb is coming down. It's coming down upon them. And the, uh, Revelation 6 and 17, for the great day of his wrath has come, and who shall be able to stand? Amen. Oh, no, my God, how can we stand? We'll not endure that. If you're a child of God, you won't be there with the wrath of God being poured upon you. God will already have rescued you before he pours out that wrath. Oh, Jesus. Lord, I don't want to be here when this is taking place. I don't want my family to be here. I don't want my friends or my church or anybody you know, to feel this wrath of God poured out upon him. He's sending his warnings now. We must heed the warnings. We must, we must heed the warnings to be ready for, you know, God send warnings to our family. Lord, send warnings to the church that will not be lukewarm. He said if we're lukewarm, he'll spew us out. We must, he'd rather you be hot or cold. I don't know about you, but uh, a good cup of coffee, when it gets lukewarm, I gotta warm it up again in the microwave if I hadn't drank it all. You know, it just don't, don't taste good in the mouth unless it's got warmth, good warmth to it. No, I don't want it to burn me, you know, too hot. Oh, hallelujah. Think about it. We don't want to be lukewarm. Uh, Jonathan Kahn, in his book entitled The Mystery of the Shemitah, it's a seven-year cycle that God set into motion when he, Moses told the people. Moses told, God told Moses to command the people. And what the Shemitah is is simply that you plant and you plow and, and you harvest for six years, but on the seventh year, you allow the land to rest. God told the people to do this through Moses. Well, the people obeyed, but then there come a time they started turning from God and they stopped obeying the law of the Shemitah to rest the land. Doesn't it make sense? You know, the Bible says uh, in six days God created all, all this that he created, but on the seventh day he rested. And he wanted that for his people. That's why we need that day of rest. That day to honor our Lord. To let Him. We should honor Him every day, don't get me wrong. But we do have to work. You know, we do have to uh, make a living and provide for our families. But that day of rest, it's called the day of the Lord. You know, He wants us to set that aside time for rest for our bodies and to honor Him. To honor Him. Hallelujah. Oh, many honor him today. Many are holy rollers. They wake up on Sunday morning and say, oh, and they just roll over and go back to sleep. <laughs> I don't want to be that kind of holy roller. <laughs> I want to be the kind that says, oh, this is the day of the Lord. Let us get up and get ready and be in the house of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> oh, but the law of the Shemitah is still in effect today. Uh, Jonathan Kahn did a lot of research to come up with this. And, and I can't tell you everything, but I did want to point out this. Um, God's calendar is divided into seven-year cycles with every seventh year called Shemitah. These seven times seven-year cycles always repeat. On September 25th of 2014, our generation entered the seventh and the last Shemitah, the 49th year. The 50th year is going into the year of Jubilee. I was wrong when I told you the 70. Where I got that 70 from was 
the, the 70 in Daniel. Yes, yes. Uh, but the Shemitah itself, 7 times 7 is 49. And as we enter, this one's coming to the close. And as we enter into the 50th year, is Jubilee, which starts on September 23rd, 2015. Now, this man that prepared this, this is his theory. I can't say it's sure. It could be. It may not be. But this is what he said. This can only mean one thing. God's seven-year tri uh, tribulation, Daniel 9, 27, missing the 70th week. Why? To delay by slotting the seven-year tribulation into the next or following seven-year window. We aren't going to enter into the next seven years. The This... Uh, Shemitah is coming to a close. Hallelujah. This man seems to think that the coming of the Lord is so imminent, it could be any time as we close this, as this um, seven-year period closes and entering into the next one, into the 50th year, which is Jubilee. Jubilee, let's see. The Shemitah means release, while Jubilee means liberation. <laughs> I don't know about you, but when I think about getting liberated, <laughs> I think about going home. Hallelujah. How do we know? You know, uh, like I said, this is just some men's theory. A lot of them have the same thoughts. But like I said, we could already be in the midst of tribulation right now. We don't know if the Lord's coming pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, or at the end of tribulation. We do know he's coming back. We do know by his word he will pour out his wrath on all the unbelievers that, have, that are still alive here. The wrath will be poured out. Oh, Jesus, help us be ready, Lord. Said the sun shall be turned to darkness. That's talking about an eclipse and the moon into blood. I believe that's the eclipse that causes that. Before the great and terrible day of the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but I, I, I look forward to the coming of the Lord. My main desire is to keep Deanna prepared and ready and try to help others to make it as well. But we're, these signs are all around us. And, and here's another tipping point in our history. And Jonathan Kahn brought it out in his teaching. And, and I believe it's so. When those, uh, was it six Supreme Justices? How many were those? Five or six? Huh? Seven. When they sat up there, and was it, what was it, five of them? No, let's see. I'm a little... Well, anyway, long story short, those su supreme justices <laughs> made the law that it's legal in all our land, all our states, for gays to get married. That was the tipping point. And let, there was something else here I thought so interesting. And it's going back on all the last seven Shemitahs. Um, like I said, we're in the seventh one now that is fixing to come to a close. But there was notable things that happened in these last seven Shemitahs. In 1938, the German Nazis attacked Jewish businesses and burned Jewish synagogues on Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass. 1945, Nazi Germany is defeated. The atomic bomb is dropped on... This is the year of the Shemitah. The atomic bomb is dropped on Japan, thus ending World War II. Japan signs peace treaty the same week of the end of the Shemitah year. Hallelujah. And we're going to bring it right down to our time. Also in 1945, the United States became a military superpower. The U.S. dollar became the world standard currency. The United States is the richest country in the world and the world's largest lender nation. Now, we all know it's not so today. 1973, and I remember that year so well. But I didn't know anything about Shemitahs or seven-year cycles. I was ignorant to all that. But I do remember the economy really went sour. And my son, Joe, he was like four years old. 
And uh, I told my husband, I said, you know, I think I need to get a job and go to work and help out our finances. That was the year I went to work and worked pretty much the whole time until I retired. But listen to what happened in 73. This was another turning point. The United States Supreme Court, the Supreme Justices again, declares that America's, Americans can kill their unborn babies. That was the year that the decision Roe Wade for the killing of the unborn to justify it. Justify it. How could it ever be justified? The World Trade Center is completed, which is a symbol of America's economic strength. Remember the Trade Center? Well, that's when it was completed then, in that year, 73. 1973, America loses its first war to Vietnam. Nixon takes America off the gold standard. This sets in motion the decline of the U.S. dollar. That was in the year of the Shemitah of 1973. 1987 years later, the U.S. Supreme Court bans the posting of the Ten Commandments in public schools. Thus, God is now completely banned from our public schools in America. Another very bad decision for America. <laughs> the Supreme Court, just a few men on a Supreme Court, it's going to make these decisions for us. Oh, dear Jesus. Now, we're coming down to 1980. Oh, I just read that. I'm sorry. That was the fourth Shemitah. In the fifth Shemitah, 2001, and we're all so, so aware of this one. The World Trade Center, <laughs> which, you know, we've already read, was completed in 73. And it was a sign of America's economic strength. The World Trade Center buildings, the symbols of America's economic strength, are destroyed by an Islamic terrorist attack. One week later, Wall Street has one of its greatest collapses on the last day of the Jewish Shemitah year. Okay? We'll never forget that 2001. And you know, for a while it stirred people up. They were going to church. They were praying. Even the president was asking everybody to pray. I remember exactly where I was that morning that we, I, the news came. I was at work. And when I heard it, I remember I just broke down crying. Because, you know, at that point, we didn't know what else was going to get attacked or, or, you know. We didn't know, you know. It was a frightening thing. And all those lives that were lost in that, that day. Oh, dear Lord, help us, Jesus. We're fixing to end another Shemitah year. 2008. I remember this year very well, too. Seven years later, in the sixth Shemitah, exactly seven years later, Wall Street sur suffers its largest decline. America is now the world's largest debtor nation. <laughs> well, I understand we're trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars in debt. We are no longer the superpower economic uh, nation of this world. If I understand right, I think it's China now. I don't know. I'm not into studying all that, but I have heard that. I'm not sure it's so. But listen, 2008, I remember that when the, the, what do you call it, when the stock market starts falling, starts falling, and, you know, I was checking on my retirement, and it was losing money every day. It was just dwindling away. And so I just went online, and you could do it yourself, and I moved my money out of the stock market, out of mutual funds, into just a money market so it wouldn't take the hit. But I'd already gotten a good hit by then. But anyway, that's how come I remember the 2008 economy collapse. Okay, now we're in 2014 to 2015. 
In September of 2014, we start a new Shemitah year. This happens in connection with a tetrad of four blood moons, which all occur on Jewish feast days. As the United States has turned away from God and endorsed many sins, it is very possible that God's judgment will fall on America during this year of Shemitah. We can pray, God, have mercy, but we cannot change the will of God. Whatever his will is is what will play out. Whatever the coming days is, like I said, our safety net is in Christ. <laughs> Our safety net is in Christ. Hallelujah. We must follow our Lord. One more interesting point I wanted to read is about happens a once in two millennial event. How often does a tetrad of, of bloods, which all fall on Jewish feast days and in a Shemitah year occur? The first list of years show the years that a tetrad of four blood moons all occur on Jewish feast years. I, I didn't put the list in here, but it's just bringing out that these occurrences are extremely rare and far apart. Very far apart. Does God have the answers to many men, men, uh, mysteries in his word? Yes, he does. It's not so important we understand the mysteries in his word. The greatest, most important point of it all is to us to be in Christ. Amen. For us to serve him. I don't have to know the mysteries of the Bible. Amen. I don't have to know when he's coming. Amen. I have to know that I'm right with God when Amen. he comes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is your and our, that's our, that's our goal is to be right with Christ when he re returns. And my thought is this. Wait a minute. One more thing. How much time I got, Ron? I don't mean to be so lengthy. Oh. <laughs> Before I have to stop. Okay. Let me read this one more. I think this is good. The Bible states that God created the sun, moon, and stars to be signs to mankind. Because of the past history of important events happening during these special times of Shemitahs and Tetras, why um, we would be prudent to be watchful. The period of 2014-15 is an extremely rare intersection of celestial events with religious observances. Many are saying this is a celestial signpost that some very important event is about to occur from our Creator. <laughs> Could it be His coming? Could it be His coming followed with His judgment? This could mean we are entering the end times and starting the tribulation in which the rise of the Antichrist happens. Antichrist doesn't necessarily have to be a man. Yeah, there may be a leader that is being led, you know, leading the people. This could be true. But the Antichrist spirit has always been amongst us, dating back to t days of Christ. That Antichrist, Antichrist simply means to be against Jesus, to be against the Christ, the Messiah. That's the Antichrist spirit. Others say it means the return of Christ. To support these ideas, the Bible says the Jews from around the world will return to their homeland, Israel. You ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I had to put that in. <laughs> we'll keep you. Let the rest go home. Uh, anyway, it says they will return to their homeland, Israel, which happened in 1948. You weren't even born then, were you? No. No, you weren't born. I'm sorry. I was. I was four years old. <laughs> it is prophesied the end times will occur within one generation of the establishment of the Jewish state, which means time is near. Others will say it means God's judgment on the nations of earth. Since America is turning away from the teachings of the Bible, many Christian leaders are warning us that we will likely face God's judgment during this time. This judgment will cause much suffering and destruction across America. 
America's unrepentant nature <laughs> mirrors the Israelites of the Old Testament, and God punished them severely for their sins. Are we going to be exempt from punishment? You think God loves us more than he loved them? No. If he punished them, he's going to punish us. He's going to punish our nation for turning from him and his word and his commandment. Current events seem to be moving us to a new world conflict, which might be World War III. Things are shaping up for such as that, people. If so, will this usher in the prophesied battle of Armageddon? Time will tell. Like I said, the future has not yet unfolded. We're seeing it. I mean, 30 years ago, I would have never dreamed that things would be like they are today. I mean, it's just getting worse and worse and worse as time moves on. Time will tell, but it is safe to say, be prepared for some major event to happen soon. And my, my thought is this, again, hope and pray for the best, but prepare for the worst. Some of us have suffered the worst. Our sister here has suffered probably the worst event of her life. I've suffered an event in my life that just nearly destroyed me. Nancy, you've been through some things. You shouldn't even be here. But you're here. God spared you. He spared you for a purpose. Amen. Amen. Some of us have been through heartbreaking situations in our Amen. life. Sister Emma, Diane, Sister Mary, she has lived through losing her husband and two of her sons. Her only sons. Sister Linda, I don't know, you know, about you. You know, what? I know you've lost your mother, you've lost brothers. Uh, and, you know, we all go through heartbreaking events. You know, that's life. Life does that. But our safety net is Christ. <laughs> No matter what we face, he's my comfort. <laughs> he's my God. <laughs> he is my Lord. Hallelujah. I'm looking forward to his coming. You know, sometimes I wish I could just shake my children and say, wake up. Wake up. Turn to Jesus with all your heart. He's coming back. He's coming back. I don't want them to be amongst the people that suffer all the wrath of God on them. Oh, dear Jesus, help us, Lord. I'm going to close with those thoughts. I, lo I love y'all. and Oh, we just need to pray, pray, pray. Seek the Lord. Cry out for his mercy on our lost loved one. Oh, dear Jesus, we are in the last days. We're in the end times. And how soon he's coming in, no man can really tell. But he did give us the seasons and the signs. And they're all around us. God is warning us. We must heed his warnings. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brother Ron, I'm going to close with that. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's pray, ladies. Let's pray some more.